Welcome to Pier Glass Poetry Spotlight number five, where we will visit one poem and its author. I'm Stan Galloway, your host, and today we're very pleased to look at Urban Love at the Laundromat with Leonard Shitinge. It's good to be with you today. Likewise. Thank you, Stan. I appreciate it. Originally from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Leonard comes to us today from Boston, where he lives with his family. He's the author of Afro Blues by Way of Congo, which came out in 2020. Leonard, would you begin by reading the poem for us? Sure. <clears throat> Woman, your smile has been disturbing the peace of my sleep. So I want to know if I fit your dream, because I am thirsty for your being. I want to taste the essence of the universe. I want to make love to your soul, caress your mind, and see if maybe I qualify. But when we exchange phone numbers and I call, your voicemail said, this is the rejection hotline. Don't feel offended, but the person that gave you this number thought you were ugly, click. And my reaction was, damn, what game are you playing? I thought our conversation had meaning. Wait a minute, is this about past relationships? Because when I met you at the laundromat, the beat of our music was right. And I wanna make a last, as long as we are honest with our spirit. Because believe me, this is more than kissing horizontally. I wanna caress your emotions like a jazz harmony. And rather than deal with society, I instead rather bathe your soul to wash away any insecurities. Somebody call law and order because I just want to be a special victim. See, you got me talking all funny, but your smile has been disturbing the peace of my sleep. So I want to know if I feed your dream because I am thirsty for your being. I want to taste the essence of your universe. I want to make love to your soul, caress your mind, and start a revolution with your body to see if maybe I qualify. I want to experience realness, something like urban love. Thank you so much, uh, Leonard. Uh, You're welcome. One of the first things I noticed uh, in this poem is the weaving together of uh, something very serious with something that's still rather lighthearted. Uh, and that's one of the consistent traits that I find in your work. Is that balance something that you consciously work at, or does that come without effort? Um, great question. Um, it's something that I'm, I'm constantly work at because I'm very intentional to provide a balance between pain and humor. Um, and I think within the poem, um, there's some pain there. Um, you know, the, 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 the approach... And then to step back from the woman, it's a pain somewhere. So I'm always intentional to incorporate humor uh, and pain, just to kind of provide that balance. As a human being, we do experience a lot of pain, but how do we laugh about? How do we, how do we laugh in the midst of all? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes good sense. Um, I think everyone responds to a love poem, uh, and and so I'm so glad that we picked this particular one for today. Love is part of that universal human condition and failed love is probably written about in more detail than successful love has ever been mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in your work with mental health how important is it for people to deal with failed relationships and mm -hmm. how does poetry enter into that yeah great question because first um anytime you experience failed relationship it's good to pause and reflect you have to go through a healing process I think the question is, how do you manage your emotion within that process, right? Um, what does it look like for you? Because, you know, fair relationship or divorce, you know, it's just part of the human condition. So I think as human being, the question is, it's okay to pause and to reflect. And then uh, the other question is, what are some of the tools that can help you reflect? The most important, heal. heal. That's where poetry comes in. Um, the, the concept of uh, introducing, I think for me, creative writing and expressive writing, expressive writing, creative writing, tied into mental health. So art is just one of the two. Of course, arts um, help us connect with poetry, essentially, and you can use poetry as a way to heal, uh, just to manage your stress, and it, it, it'll, it's, it becomes very therapeutic, if that makes sense, yeah. So that's where it comes in, uh, that intersection between 
poetry and healing it's, it's important yeah no i agree with you i, I think that, that that poetry is not it is an art but it is a tool as well um, yeah 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 um the refrain uh, which is repeated at the end of the poem, identifies love on an existential plane mm. rather than a physical one, which mm. is implied you know, in that comparison. In what ways does the poem argue for assessing love at a more than physical level? Mm, mm. I'm glad you asked that, you caught that. And I think there's a line in the poem where I said, um, this is more than kissing horizontally. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I'm just trying to introduce the concept of, let me get to know you first, you know, before we get to, you know, uh, baking cookies. <laughs> in, in other words, I think the concept of uh, make love to your mind and to your soul, all I simply say, getting to know somebody. And I think it's more, it's more appealing that way, that it's not just about I mean, let me get in your pan on, on both sides. So it's good to, that's why the key phrase is, key, uh, so it's more than kissing horizontally. I want to make love to your mind and to your soul. Uh, yeah, I think we can do better. Uh, as, as human being is trying to connect on a more higher level, you know, get to know somebody's mind and soul. Um, I mean, and, and if we if we want to dive in deeper, we all human being. I mean, we all sexual being. It's a reality. It's not like it's a bad thing. But how about we kind of have conversation? You know, get to know each other first and go from there. Yeah, if, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that makes uh, that makes a lot of sense. And um, and seeing it here, you know, it, it's not. You, mm -hmm. uh, overbearing yeah, in the yeah. poem, uh, but it, it is really, I think, the foundation yeah. of the poem is saying, you know, this is not just about the physical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so finally, I wonder uh, if there's some specific elements of urban love huh. that don't exist in, say, rural love. You know, what what effect, uh, what makes this an urban? poem as the title suggests mm, great question i think it speaks of the environment I, I i wrote that poem when i'm still living in the urban city urban area sort of like what was that um teenage or young adult engagement in those type of environment you know what i mean typically in the urban in the city there's so many uh engagement when it comes to love people like to flirt people like to i'm not trying to generalize it but i think the, the environment speak to it um, I think the laundromat back then was somewhere in the metropolitan of Boston, I forgot, urban setting. So this urban love. Um, but yeah, it could be rural love too in, in the rural setting. Uh, I think, I don't know if different settings speak of different situations, but I think I, at that time, I was just, I just wanted to bring the setting uh, attached to the poem. Yeah. Well, and I like that because um, it seems like at least in my reading habits, I mm -hmm. come across more poems, more nature poems, yeah, yeah. which don't look at how that gets complicated, mm -hmm. you know, in asphalt and concrete. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I think that, that this poem does some of that complication. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're not, you're not going to meet, you know, out in a field somewhere, you know, yeah. you've only got a, a you know a 12 by 16 room with 14 washing machines in it yeah yeah it's yeah. kind of like a weekend people are just watching it watching it close and what did that setting look like a lot of things happen and i think it speaks also to to so the, there's also external factors circumstance that that can impact the quality of your love that can impact how you engage a larger math setting was was kind of perfect a lot of commotions happen so um yeah and it, it's based on a true story in the poem I think we hand up, I got her with a good line when she was laughing, you know, but then after that, she told me she broke up with a boyfriend, but um, I was kind of hurt, but I just reflected and wrote it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and um, it just occurs to me that if there's, if you're sitting there watching your laundry go around and around in circles, in essence, that's what this poem does too, is it, it captures that, that going yeah. around, that spinning without making any progress you're still yes. in the same place at the end and then you see the picture attached with the book yeah i was so intentional right yeah, right it's funny i was so intentional and i think uh it went perfect <laughs> Visual. yeah as always let me end by asking is there anything you would like to add to help us appreciate the poem uh, more fully that maybe i've overlooked uh, no, I think I think you, you dissected well. I think I just want folks to take away that 
it's always good to look at things from multifaceted level because there's always some underlying messaging, especially internally, externally. Internally, what do I mean by just that emotion? You know, how we engage with each other. How can we be aware of our feelings? And then the external part comes just the setting, the environment. Uh, I think it's a poem that can be dissected in so many ways. Uh, and, you know, the message is an example that can bring humor and pain, which is the theme across so many of my, my poetry. And I think my, my expertise in really using spoken word to help people digest a tough topic, right? Um, right. Yeah, that, that's it. But, um, yeah, you got it. So I'm ho- I hope folks can appreciate it. Thank you for the support. Um, you, you're such a great, great person, great team, Stan. I cannot thank you enough. Well, thank you, uh, Leonard, for joining us today. It's a pleasure working with you again. Leonard is completing his doctoral studies in leadership psychology while maintaining an active speaking and consulting schedule. You can find him at his website, consciouslyexposed, one word, dot net. For Pig West Poetry, I'm Stan Galloway, wishing you a poetic day. <laughs>